I have to keep my voice down because there's a fencing training session going on behind me. I come to this gym to, uh, to practice my fencing moves. I uh, began fencing using a violin bow because the swishing sound, the hair and the wood combined, it really gets this quite intense swish, um, which I really, I really like. Also, I think it looks less aggressive than, uh, you know, using a weapon. Um, so I quite like this idea of using instruments to create a more peaceful way of fencing, to emphasize the musicality and less of the violence. The sounds of fencing are really quite interesting, very intricate, very delicate sound. But when using the violin bow, that sound has a bit more depth. I initially started by copying some of the moves from my favourite martial arts films. And I would uh, I'd take out any of the moves that I couldn't do, and I'd just keep the ones that I could do in the sword fighting scenes, and then I'd uh, practice them in front of a mirror at home. But I decided it'd be better to uh, come to a, a proper gymnasium and, uh, and practice for real. I tend to just practice my moves alone, but if anyone's interested in joining me to do some fencing with violin bow, then please call 07912 I like to come out to the park and run and I think that the rhythms that you get into when running they they be quite quite musical, you know, you feel it feel the music in your body. I think when I run I can feel that music but I want I always want to to somehow bring the breathing just out of just being ordinary breathing and into something sonorous. I thought, how can I play an instrument while running? Well, this idea of having these bicycle horns, the ones that go <laughs> If you take off the bulb on the end, inside there's just a reed, and so what I did was I put one of those in my mouth and I decided to run with it. But just with one of them in my mouth, I couldn't get enough enough oxygen to my lungs and I'd be out of breath, so I decided to get three of these bicycle horns and bind them together with tape and then stick them in my mouth so I can get enough oxygen into my lungs. The thing is, you know, I just, when I'm running on my own, it's solo, but I think if I had a, a running partner, rather than just having a, a three note chord, we could create together a, a six note cluster. <laughs> All different horns, different pitches, and different rhythms as the breathing in and out. So, I mean, if anyone would be interested in joining me, then please call 07912 As a composer, I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's really important to to play squash. It's a very musical game. When the ball's bouncing, the echo, the resonance, the indeterminate rhythm of the game, everything it comes together in this big cacophonous sound. You know, I think it's it's really such a fantastic musical experience to play. come to the squash court and I play against myself and I start to think about music and then I start to talk about music. It is said that talking about music is like dancing about architecture. This means that talking about music is pointless.
the sounds of the voice when you're out of breath I think it really changes it and it really gives it a different character and it, it's that character that sounds like music but talking can sometimes sound like music this activity also interacts with architecture in a very direct way I listen to a lot of music where the voice has been distorted in some way, maybe using electronics, but really our voice distorts in everyday life. It distorts on the squash court when you're out of breath, when you're running for a ball, when you can't concentrate on what you're saying. And that's also music. If talking can be considered music, then this game of squash can be considered dance. In this case, we are talking about music whilst dancing about architecture. I think the next level for me is to play with a partner. I'd invite anyone to join me on the squash court at any time to talk about music or anything else. Just give me a call on 07912 534 87